Matt Finken is the Albert J. Harno and Edward W. Cleary Chair in Law at the University of Illinois. He teaches labor and employment law and directs the Colleges of Law's program in comparative labor and employment law and policy. Professor Finken has previously taught at Southern Methodist University, Duke University, and the University of Michigan Law Schools. He received his BA from Ohio Wesleyan University, an LLB from New York University, and an LLM from Yale University. Professor, welcome to the, to the committee. It is uh, truly a privilege to appear before this body. Uh, as someone who has taught, researched, and published in labor law for 33 years, to finally meet face to face with people who have the capacity to make the raw material out of which I make my living. Uh, you have my written remarks. I will try very briefly to summarize the four leading points. First, since 2004, the National Labor Relations Board has embarked upon an historically unprecedented course, rendering decision after decision, some uh, overturning doctrine of short duration, some turning, overturning doctrine of more than 40 years, which combine to make more difficult for employees to institute or maintain a collective bargaining relationship or that curtail or eviscerate the rights of non-unionized employees, the right to engage in concerted activity for mutual aid or protection. This much, uh, I submit, is simply beyond dispute. Uh, the phrase, uh, the chairman used the phrase special interest. I'm, I do not think I represent any special interest. I merely represent an honest academic laboring in the vineyard of labor law. But I note that a petition has been submitted and entered on the committee record signed by what I believe is a majority of the full-time teachers of labor law in American law schools. Uh, I did not have the benefit of that petition at the time I wrote my own remarks. But I note that the sentiments that I express here are completely concordant with what a majority of my colleagues in the academy think to be true. Second, none of these decisions, none of them are statutorily commanded. They are the product of policy choices made by the board. That, too, is beyond dispute and, indeed, is confirmed by the previous discussion. Ironically, given the intense politicization of the board in recent years, a differently constituted board majority could in future reconsider each of these uh, decisions and reach an opposite effect well within the ambit of administrative discretion. Third, and related to that, the board has the power to fashion national labor policy interstitial to the Labor Act, that is the function of an administrative agency, to fine tune and adjust the statute to change circumstances to unforeseen condi conditions in the economy or in, or in s larger trends in society. That's its function. For reasons that my remark explained, my final point, and really an answer to your opening questions, Chairman, the board's decisions are not responsive to any discernible trend in society or any discernible economic demand or need. On the contrary, they, they work in a quite opposite direction. I, I submit that they are oblivious to the unfolding realities of the American workplace on many of the kinds of questions that Senator Kennedy uh, remarked upon as he opened. I believe my views are shared, as I said, widely within the academic community, those of us who teach, research, and worry about the direction of American employment law.